Great. I'm going to talk about health policy and budget policy, or you know, health policy is budget, budget policy, and budget policy is health policy. Um, this is sort of the agenda, the issues I want to go over, and I want to just quickly say how healthcare spending, sort of an overview of where we're spending money, how we're spending money, entitlements, health entitlements in the context of overall government spending. Focus on sort of these three programs: Medicare, the ACA, and Medicaid. Who and what they cover, how they're funded, how they pay how they interact, and you know, sometimes people are in more than one program or they've changed between programs. And then in the mix of that, sort of challenges of making projections and analyses, why healthcare is different than other entitlements in a lot of ways. Uh, and then how and why healthcare is changing, which is partly why making those projections is so difficult. So this is another one of my silly slides, that Medicaid is like Medicare, except how it's not, all right? So low income, Medi this is a simple way to remember this. You care for the elderly, you aid the poor. Medicaid is for the low income. Medicare is a federal program, it's one big financing system. Medicaid is state programs that run under federal rules. Um, so it's 51 programs plus really five more for the territories, 51 being DC. And then many, many, many waivers. So it's run under federal rules, except it's really run under all these waivers. The interesting thing about the waivers is they're all supposed to be budget neutral, and that comes into another scoring, budgeteer modeling thing. A lot of the waivers will be three or five year waivers, and the, the states will get the uh, permission to spend more in the first couple of years, because things are going to get better, and then they'll save in the out years. We were under a great deal of pressure, particularly during the Clinton administration, but also under the Bush 43 administration to achieve budget neutrality in those waivers. In those waivers. So there was a lot of extraordinary flexibility had to be exhibited to get there. Romney care was in Massachusetts yes. was done in a waiver. Yes. And because everybody in Massachusetts wanted to do it, Governor Romney wanted to do it, Ted Kennedy wanted to do it, they massaged the numbers. Um, Romney it actually it spent it ended up spending more in the early years than even projected because the number of people getting low income subsidies was a lot higher than had been in the waiver scoring. And everybody, I was living in Massachusetts at the time, I know a bunch of people were involved. And everybody kind of knew that number they were using for subsidies was too low. That there were going to be more people getting subsidies and the costs were going to be higher. But everybody agreed that was the numbers they were going to use. Um, so what is Medicaid a little bit? This is that chart from before. 18% of all healthcare spending, 11 federal, 7% state. The old Medicaid, pre-expansion, you had to be categorically eligible. It was, you were entitled to it, which had to be low income, either a kid, a parent of a kid, or you could be pregnant, uh, disabled, or duly eligible. So you were Medicare, but low income. The expansion population was just low income. So quick guess is to, if you can do the demographic gymnastics here, who was this expansion population? What kind of people? They're low income. They're not kids. They don't have, that's right. They were adults without kids. This is my very simple graph showing this. This is the income percentage of income, and this is like kids, kids, you know, parents of kids, disabled, the elderly, and were low income. There were a few kids who were already required to be covered up to about 130, 130, 38 percent of poverty. Um, but the ACA expansion for Medicaid sort of bumped everybody up to that 130, 338%, and then there's this childless adults. So this is kind of the Medicaid expansion concept. A lot of states had different categories of income eligibility in here, um, and, some, and the non-expansion states still do. But to do Medicaid expansion, it bumped everybody up to this big square. You could put people through some of their waivers they just allowed into some different options rather than just the, the vanilla Medicaid expansion. Oh, this is, again, remember that chart with the 5%, 50%? This is Medicaid. This is a little bit old, but 5%, 53%, right? But if you look at actually those four categories, you'll see it kind of almost a little bit makes sense. The disabled, they're probably a little more expensive than, you know, than kids. Kids make up 50% of the enrollees. This is a few years old, but only 20% of the cost. 
Sure. What makes a senior get Medicaid instead of Medicare? They get both. They get both. They get both. They're entitled to Medicare because basically if you've paid into Medicare, those, those Medicare taxes for a certain number of quarters over your entire life and you get to be um, 65, uh, you get Medicare. You have to, if you, to get into Part B, you've got to pay a premium. But if you're low income, um, you get that premium paid for you and some of the cost sharing if you're low enough income. And similarly, the Part D program, you can get that premium paid or some of the cost sharing paid. So how do states pay for Medicaid? There's the FMAP, which I always have to write out because I never remember what it stands for. Basically, this is the federal medical assistance percentage. It's the percentage of spending that the federal government pays. The minimum they pay is 50%, and it goes up from there. It depends on the state's average income. depends on the service and benefits. So some, like family planning, the federal government pays 90%. An expansion versus non-expansion. Remember that the, the grade-in uh, hashed population of childless adults? Under the ACA, the federal government pays 100% for the Medicaid expansion population of people. And that was for three years and then goes down. The states that haven't expanded now are facing, uh, it, go, it starts at 100% for three years and then it, it ramps down to 90%. Um, the president's proposed in his budget that states that haven't expanded yet, they can, if they start now, they will also get that 100% for three years. Um, and then there's also managed care programs, which we'll talk about later. So this is uh, the FMAP, 50% here going up to like 73%. Um, another thing, I don't have a chart on this, but the other thing that can change federal spending, state spending, um, during a recession, Medicaid population grows, enrollment grows, state revenues go down. What's happened several times is the federal government, to try and ease the burden on the states, has uh, done an F FMAP bump. Basically, we'll say instead of 55%, whatever it is, you guys, everybody gets an extra, I think it's been like 5%. Isn't that right? Somebody nodding their head. So it's another reason why health spending of the federal government can change uh, and the percentages between federal and state can change. This is another silly slide to have. States have similarities and differences across each other. I mean, all the states in the country, you know, you can look at the map, there's a lot of differences. We just look at all that and think about it. Um, but these are just some of the big ones. Their F map is different from that chart. The politics are different. Their fiscal situations. I mean, North Dakota, two years ago, had a really low unemployment rate, and they were just flush with money and oil. Alaska's always been sort of flush with money and oil. The price of oil's dropped. It's really hit those economies in Texas, too. Um, public health, how they're all structured, their waivers, the way they've expanded Medicaid, their demographics. Uh, their healthcare systems and organization. We'll talk, we'll talk more about that. Anybody from Southern California? What, do, what kind of healthcare delivery systems, hospitals, doctors, what's it like out there? Uh, a lot of, uh, I'll, I'll bail you out. A lot of big group, integrated group practices. A lot of big managed care plans. Very collegial. It's expensive, but they've got really sort of integrated, coordinated, collegial, happy surfer dude. Western Pennsylvania, anybody from Western Pennsylvania or Eastern Ohio? What's healthcare like in Western Pennsylvania? <laughs> you can use more uh, bad words, it's okay. It's, uh, uh... Is it like unicorns and rainbows? No, no, hardly. Is it like a steel death cage match? It's pretty terrible, yeah. to be honest with you. There's two big health systems out there that are fighting like the Hatfields and the McCoys in the shooting years. This is the Medicaid expansion. This map keeps changing. Kaiser does a great job keeping it up. This is from January of uh, this year. Um, Louisiana, new governor, Democratic governor, he's expanding. Uh, Pennsylvania, <coughs> new Democratic governor, went from a waiver to a straight regular Medicaid expansion. Utah's looking at it, although they've had problems. Virginia, the governor keeps trying to push it through. He ran on it, but the legislature won't let him do it. Um, Maine isn't happening. Alabama did some work down there. That governor... Governor Bentley, he's actually, he's, he's leaning towards, going towards expansion, trying to figure out how to make it work. Uh, there's a lot of interesting dynamics in hospital, hospital payments. Um, but if Louisiana goes and Alabama goes, I think a lot of these states 
are going to look around and go, do we really want to be behind Alabama and Louisiana? Um, Arkansas is changed, you know, did one of the very first waivers, just how they got their, their expansion population sort of into the exchanges. Some of the other states about having like sort of a, other kinds of requirements and cost sharing. Interestingly, when Medicaid passed in 65, anybody want to guess how long it took for all the states to have Medicaid programs? There's no requirement that a state have a Medicaid program, by the way. It's completely voluntary. But it's such a good deal that eventually it all happened. Does anybody know, want to take a guess, what year after 65 for the last state adopted Medicaid? Come on, take a guess. Just a year. You start calling 68. it. 68. What's that? 68. 68 here. You in the uh, gray sweatshirt holding your iPad. 86. 86? 1982. Arizona. Very last state to have a Medicaid program. Arizona, Governor Brewer, I believe, Republican, kind of pretty conservative. Currently, guess what they did? Straight Medicaid expansion right off the bat. It's, um, you know, you look at this map, it's not all like all the Democrats went and expanded and all the Republicans didn't. It was just Governor Kasich, you may have heard of him, was running for president. He expanded Medicaid over the objections of his legislature by executive order because of a very interesting provision of Ohio law and the Ohio Constitution. The other states couldn't do it. Um, Governor Bashir in Kentucky did a straight Medicaid expansion. The new Republican governor came and ran on repealing Medicaid expansion, repealing ACA, everything, everything, everything. What he didn't realize, or maybe he did realize, there's a law in Kentucky that says the governor is required to maximize federal contributions to Medicaid. The legislature passed it, uh, I think, in the, in the mid-'70s because they wanted to make sure they got as much money from the federal government as they could. But that, so Governor Bashir, so the current governor is kind of really hard pressed to try and cut any of that back. He's going to go, trying to go from a straight Medicaid expansion, one of these waivers. But we'll see. Um, which is, which should be fine. 